हेलो यस सर आर यू ऑडिबल यस यस नो इट इज ऑडिबल आई थिंक आई एम ऑडिबल यस सर ओके जस्ट वन मिनट ओके Okay. I am sharing my screen. Just one minute, okay? Yes, sir. Welcome, sir. Meanwhile, I would also like to tell that our another keynote speaker, Bob Sinclair, sir, has joined us. Welcome, sir. Yes, sir. अभी आज कर देगा सही से Uh, now it is uh, visible yes sir visible sir okay okay so what is the duration sir half an hour sir okay okay thank you uh, so today i, I will discuss uh, uh, some uh, uh, dimension of the security and uh, why we require the security first of all uh, i thank you to organizing committee Uh, Rajiv, Manisha, and other members. So thank you very much to provide this uh, opportunity to me. Sir, your uh, video the... is off, sir. Hello. Sir, your video is off. Okay. Just wait. So now I am visible. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. So I I will close the video during uh, this uh, PPT. I will on uh, after uh, ending this session. If there yes, is sir. a question, answer. Sure, sir. Okay. It will save the bandwidth. Okay, sir. Sure, okay. sir. So the the talk is related to security uh, solution. Uh, so the first uh, slide is related to motivation. Exactly, what is our uh, assessed and why we need the security. So the first uh, we try to find out the answer of this question. Uh, if we are living in digital era then we require the different type of the devices like personal computer smartphone tablet internet of thing and uh, is smart tv wearable device and there are the uh, many more so i think uh, you just see the graph the trend is going to change and uh, the number of these devices is going to increase day by day so uh, if we have these device then what is the outcome of these device then you just see here the contribution of the smartphone is 90 to 21% okay then uh, your tablet is the 3% like this 
so if there are the multiple devices there so if we are going to generate the data so huge volume of the data is going to generate it so if there is some data is going to generate it means it required the some storage or space it also required some communication bandwidth and if data or information in there then security obviously come into the picture now uh, what is exactly a security and uh, where we uh, want to provide the security so if we talk about the security it is a kind of the protection of the general assets and we can provide the protection in term of the hardware as well as software then where we want to provide this uh, solution uh, security uh, there are the three environment like global environment electronic environment and local environment it means we provide the security in these three places for example a local area it means you need the security on your uh, particular system or device okay what is the requirement of that device related to security you just provide accordingly now the most important question is why we required the security so these are the three uh, main term or these are the three main things Uh, so we required the security so first one is the threat so if there is any disturb of the operation function integrity or availability of the system then we uh, required the uh, kind of the solution then uh, the second one is the vulnerability vulnerability is the most important if we are going to provide the security so we need to analysis what is the level of the vulnerability for example we are using a mobile so there is a cve value uh, you just uh, find out what is the uh, cve value according to that uh, the your system is vulnerable or not so it is a kind of the weakness which may become at the time of the designing uh, and configuration or implementation or or maybe time of the management now the third part is the attack already it is uh, listened by the most people attack so attack means just uh, suppose you are going to perform any action with a objective so uh, for example you want to modify a file then uh, your target is fulfill according to attack so there are the two type of the attack for example uh, passive attack and active attack so in case of the passive attack generally we monitor the system to exploit that and second one is the active in case of the active attack we try to modify or delay the file according to objective of the attacker for example there is a denial of service or virus these are the some example of the attack now uh, this is the way how we provide the security and what are the different uh, dimension of the security so in this case uh, where we have the one simple security then information security network security and our device security so these are the different uh, places where we need to provide the security solution and how we provide the security solution so there are the three way one is the difference and second one is the detect and third one is the defense in case of the difference we try to provide a kind of the prevention for example suppose we have a mobile or personal computer so already we install a anti virus or anti spam aware the it is a one example of the difference then if there is some attack or vulnerability attack or uh, threat has come then we need to regularly uh, check or scan the system so after one month after 15 days you um, after one period you need to detect or you need to scan the system suppose there are the some attack has come on your system during scanning then you need the defense process it means you need to delete those or what what you want to do you can do and there are the two way you just provide uh, this process in the form of the logical as well as physical logical means you just provide a software for example already we given uh, anti virus is there so regularly you need to follow this process uh, installation then scanning then defense in case of the physical suppose someone is steal your complete system 
then you need the different type of the remedy like lock is there and uh, uh, door lock is there cctv is there and uh, boundary is there so multiple uh, solution is there related to sec physical security now uh, if we just recall these all things so already we have a pa passive and active attack and there is a 3d mechanism uh, defense or detect and uh, your uh, defend and there are the some service uh, by which we try to uh, achieve the mechanism for example what are the process what are the inside algorithm uh, we uh, use inside of the mechanism so already there is a one term uh, cia uh, mostly book have the one term cia confidentiality integrity authorization so this is the extension of that command so inside of the command there is a, a confidentiality authentication message integrity authorization or availability and non repetition so we will discuss later on this so this is very simple example to understand what is exactly security or how we use the security how much we use the security so this is very layman example suppose uh, there is a, any person uh, he or she suffer from any disease so already he visit to hospital and there is a one doctor he consult some medicine but uh, if you, you talk about the medicine medicine is here like command it means there are the multiple or penalty of the tablet there are the different size of the tablet in medical store so your doctor will not write all medicine for a particular disease so this is a question for researcher how much security we provide to our system what is the impact of that security is we provide a complete command at a time if we provide a complete command at a time then what happen so you if if you are a researcher or developer you just try to think and find out the answer so there is a one uh, term or one clue that is a overhead so that overhead will come if it will be high then your system may be hang up so you just try to provide such type of the solution which should be lightweight and more secure and now uh, these are the some character uh, these these character generally used in cryptography or when we provide the security with help of the a uh, cryptography that, that may be change according to your understanding or what are the geographical area generally there are the uh, standard uh, character in cryptography alice bob prudy already these are the three terms so uh, uh, for uh, say uh, we use in here generally these are the two friend j and viru they want to communicate to each other and there is a one network manager like uh, one person is there and there is a one opponent who want to uh, receive the intermediate information and want to delay or resend that information so based on this uh, character uh, this is the security model uh, where source and destination is there and one uh, opponent is there for example uh, source they want to communicate to viru so he uh, will send the some secure data to destination and he uh, just with the help of the algorithm try to receive the original message but uh, due to some weakness of the system intermediate person may be achieve that information so some attack may be possible on different type of the uh, your uh, security dimension like eves dropping is there so it is a kind of the attack on confidentiality means suppose someone is going to receive your message from channel so it is a eves dropping and this is it may be attacker use or just uh, uh, it is a kind of the monitoring or passive attack or it may be a kind of the active active attack if that message is going to retransmission or modify okay if it is generally only monitoring uh, so it it is a kind of the passive second attack is possible integrity attack it means uh, suppose someone is going to communicate to each other it is uh, the flow of the message or communication is going to uh, your uh, cut off for example delay may be done and uh, your uh, release of the message for example some person receive that message and re uh, after some time it will be released to destination now another one is the authenticity attack you just say the fabrication of the identity for example someone is there a source 
and uh, one person as a opponent is saying i am the person x and he or she is sending the data to a destination so it is a kind of the attack on authentication now there is a one attack on availability for example there is a one server and the server is not going to provide any service so it means it is a attack on availability uh, generally uh, the attacker use the denial of service for this purpose so in this case the performance or availability of the system has come and now i uh, suppose there are the different type of the attack so to handle those attack there are the eight dimension of the security already we have uh, discussed the five terms so uh, this is the extension of those five terms so there are the access control authentication non nepotization data confidentiality communication security uh, data integrity availability and privacy so already you just see for example authentication is going to achieve by digital signature digital certificate some secret okay uh, and there is some uh, for example we want to achieve the confidentiality encryption decryption process is there so with the help of the encryption and decryption we achieve the uh, data confidentiality if we want to achieve the integrity then there are the penalty of the hash algorithm is there generally in antivirus we use the hash algorithm for example there are the multiple type of the attack is there so according to attack name or their definition we generate the hash algorithm and we feed into anti uh, antivirus when we scan the our system so uh, that uh, antivirus try to verify the attackers according to their definition okay so our antivirus generally ask to update the values or update the definition that is the reason now uh, there is a three uh, security layers according to that we apply the remedy or solution of the security so one is the infrastructure security layer second one is the security uh, services layer third one is the application means how we are going to handle the complete system so first one is the our infrastructure when we are going to design then we will care about the security at the first level second one when we are going to provide the service uh, then we have the one layer and we provide the remedy or solution accordingly now when we are going to use the our system or services uh, like uh, we are browsing the net and we are using email then we require the uh, security according to command uh, inside of uh, this layer so already there are the different protocol according to protocol we try to cover the security solution according to different layers and now uh, there is a, a different plan if we are talking about the security already uh, how we are going to manage and how we are going to uh, provide the end to end user security and then how we are going to provide the signaling and controlling in these three cases we divide the uh, entire space entire network or entire system into three parts so first one is your end to end user second one is the controlling third one is the management so already inside of the each uh, plane there are the three layers it means in all three uh, planes there are the three layers so uh, and inside of the each layer there are the eight dimension security uh, a parameter is there or goal is there we try to provide or we try to achieve accordingly so if you see here the according to different plan there are the different protocol protocol means sets of rule for which is you going to use into communication so uh, on these protocols we need to provide a kind of the protection or security which uh, provide the security or which provide the protection to our entire uh, system so already we have discussed what is exactly command this term uh, already we have discussed after attack and uh, 3d 
so this is exactly command command means confidentiality and authentication message integrity access control don nepotization so this is the sub part of the a dimension security services okay now suppose we want to provide a security then we select a environment for example i am saying the network so network is the one environment and uh, there is some cryptographic solution we will provide the solution accordingly so uh, complete uh, the, according to your environment plus solution it will be one example of the network security so if we are talking about the network security it is very necessary to know what is exactly network so this is the one summary of the entire network already there is a some topologies there it means it is a kind of the infrastructure how our infrastructure is going to design so there are the multiple type of the topologies there then second is the how we are going to use our network so already there is a wired and wireless media is there and there are the different type of the network is there so we will care according to that the most important or the heart of this network is the models models having some layers and some protocols so generally we use the tcp ip model and there are the five layers so we will care or we will provide the solution accordingly for example someone are working in physical layer so you just care about the physical layer solution okay if someone is working on transport layer then we will care about the transport layer solution so according to your flavor according to your research domain you just provide the solution to each layer now these are the different protocol we are not going to discuss these protocol so already uh, there are the multiple or penalty of the protocol then if we are talking about the security then we will care about that so this is the one uh, uh, pictorial form of the different dimension of the network security or you just say the security so we will start from media already media is same what is the inside of the computer network wired and wireless if we are talking about the security then we we care about the wired as well as wireless security now uh, there are the two type of the security one is the link to link and one is the end to end in case of the link to link we will care the uh, one uh, each node suppose there are the 10 node in a network then we will provide the security according to requirement suppose it is a confidentiality then we will care about the confidentiality for 10 nodes but in case of the end to end we will care the security or we, we care about the protection of the source and destination only now there is a one question for researcher they try to think uh, which type of the solution is the better one and what is the reason behind that so according to literature they try to find out which solution is the best one and what is the reason uh, behind that okay now another di the direction like security security having the different component already we have discussed the attacker so uh, i have discussed only just keyword uh, active and passive but they according to different uh, media according to different area there are the penalty of the attacker you just try to find out from literature and there is a, already we have discussed the security goals uh, eight dimension security goal then plane then your layers so you just find out the one or two a uh, security goal a uh, security goal accordingly now inside of the security goal we use the algorithm related to cryptography or security generally they use the some key okay it may be uh, your uh, like a symmetric key asymmetric key so key is the most important component inside of the security so we need to care about the key how our key is the secure what is the uh, the size of that key so that does matter in the research and development okay now according to if you see the tcp ip model we have already many solution like ipsec ssl okay pgp uh, respective uh, to each layer so we try to think according to area and they, we try to identify the layer of that area then we try to uh, reach uh, one or two uh, layers according to our objective if we are uh, in a researcher now this is very simple uh, example how we increase how we work uh, and uh, in incremental way so already this is the one example of the des 
so ds is there that is the one example of the basic command or basic a dimension security it is related to confidentiality if we use the des and we combine the two services then there is a ah and eh eh means authentication header or encryption payload which is going to use inside of the ipsec so uh, uh, by one incremental way if we are a researcher or we have a good group then we can try to provide a good standard uh, or a security patch then it may be embedded with our tcp ip model so this is the way how we can increase according to our capability and capacity okay now this is the same uh, how we uh, use or how we deploy the security first one is the already prevention if there is a attack or not we will take some remedy at the minimum level then regularly we detect the our system uh, for this threat vulnerability and attack then we will provide the cie or confidentiality command okay then your system will be secure now if we talk about the command so command is just like a cryptographic solution okay if you see all algorithm related to confidentiality authentication message integrity then uh, it is a cryptography that is going to use behind that so this is the one simple uh, question uh, when was the time when cryptography had started so uh, i am not uh, just asking because we are not in face to face so answer is very simple it is very 3000 or 4000 uh, bc already pyramid is there there is a hierography is going to use and there are the many researcher group they try to find out the answer with the help of the uh, cipher text it means encrypted message is there and they try to find out the uh, original message without key it may be it will take the 100 year 200 year 1000 year so after that you may be achieve the um, just original message okay so if we talk about the terminology of the cryptography and what is exactly cryptography it is a kind of the secret or hidden things uh, by which we can protect our system or devices and these are the some terms like plain text cipher text key okay and there is a process suppose a plain text is going to use a, a algorithm with help of the key it will be convert into cipher text the process is non encryption same way there is a suppose a receive destination receive the cipher text encrypted message again apply the same algorithm and same key and again achieve the original message the process is non decryption process now these are the some technique i am not going to discuss these technique okay uh, these are the classical one block based public and private be base uh, again we divide these uh, technique into two parts substitution transpose now these are the uh, some uh, block based in case of the block based there is a ds as 3d as exists in this category these are the symmetric base uh, mechanism which provide the security inside of the system now there are the uh, if you uh, just see uh, the one word security solution so you just divide the entire space into three part or entire process into three parts uh, first one is the uh, when attack is going to happen and uh, uh, second one is the before that uh, attack happening and third one is the after that attack so these are the three stage or three phases first phase is the when attack is not happening so in this case uh, generally we provide the prevention kind of thing and last one is the uh, suppose attack is happen post attack so computer forensic is the one solution already there is a fixed solution like data collection examination and reporting we follow that but when uh, the attacker is going to try uh, inside of our system so there is a, a cryptographic mechanism like confidentiality authentication integrity and key sharing so these are the some solution already we have discussed and we try to achieve the uh, 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 our security goal or try to provide the security accordingly now if we talk about the network security already uh, these are the some uh, hottest uh, word or very fam 
uh, if we are the researcher and doing research in these area wsn iot cyber cloud so these are the some words and we try to provide the security in these areas so these are the very big areas so generally there are the some challenges like switching routing access control so we need to care the security issue and embedded the security solution with these things for example there is a routing is there then your routing should be secure if you want to achieve the uh, data securely now we use the command to provide the solution already we have discussed what is exactly command so we will try to provide the security support we are talking about the cloud uh, cloud then there is a data security is very important part then we will care about that access control also the second one suppose we are accessing any data from uh, our server or cloud then web security come into picture then when we are going to transfer our data from source to destination then channel security will come so these are the very uh, you just say the big uh, challenges or big uh, component you just try to find out or explore with the uh, literature so this is the one example suppose we are going to provide the security to iot already we have three uh, pillar like iot device itself a base station is there cloud is there suppose that device is connecting with our server or cloud then we will think about the security solution we just apply the security solution accordingly for example suppose we are talking about the uh, iot security uh, already uh, there is a confidentiality solution so there are the penalty of the mechanism is there process is there so this is the one survey according to that then privacy solution is there availability solution is there and you can apply the emerging technology like uh, blockchain software defined networks okay so uh, you just try to find out some literature according to direction and just apply uh, the solution and uh, now uh, the, this is the one example of the interdiscipline area suppose uh, your area is matching with someone for example it is bi biologist or biotech then you just try to find out some uh, another solution related to security for example there is a some algorithm and you just use the dna component inside of that algorithm in, uh, as a key or as a uh, in part of the algorithm then you can be achieve the one solution with the help of the interdiscipline area so now uh, i am coming uh, at the conclusion part already we have the multiple device uh, and uh, we have the network server and cloud so inside of the device there is a operating system android apps wifi sim and web page if suppose there is a operating system inside of the device like android we try to find out what are the vulnerability what are the attack possible in that uh, your operating system then same way you just try to find out the security solution related to wifi wired or sim and the most important the your api and web page so suppose there is a some api or apps is there then you just think about uh, how much it is relevant to us and what is the security solution should be required for that uh, apps or uh, api so this is a, a kind of the beginning not a ending so thank you very much if still there is a, any question uh, you may ask hello uh thank you very much sir okay yes sir thank you so much sir this was dr karan singh sir from school of computer and system sciences jnu yes, thank sir. you sir for uh, enlightening us okay. with the knowledge on network security uh, sir told about told us about various aspects of network security including various threats and how the security is being employed in various networks and sir also told about uh, us about different encryption methods also so thank you so much sir for joining us here on this platform now i would like to invite bob sinclair sir first i would like to introduce bob sinclair sir with you all sir is advisory director in global mining sustainability formerly professor at laurentian university 
sir was all, uh, also former vice president at oracle pole research institute limited so let us welcome dr bob sinclair sir over to you sir welcome sir sir please unmute yourself sir please unmute yeah. yes Can welcome you hear sir me now? good afternoon sir there thank you for the introduction um I appreciate the uh, invitation and it was very kind. I got my, I apologize, I got my timing messed up because you know, you're 12 time zones away from me. And I thought I was doing this at 12.30 in the afternoon, my time, and it's now 3.30 in the, it's almost, it's almost uh, 20 to four in the morning, my time. So if I sound a little drowsy, there's a reason for it. So Rajiv, you had a sex change since the last time I saw you. Uh, you look much better now than you used to, my friend. Uh, you didn't get my joke. <laughs> no one got my joke. No sense of humor over there. <laughs> anyway, um, so what I want to talk to you about today uh, are uh, the successes and fail failures that we ha have had with um, technology um, during the pandemic. And so, um, let me see if I can share my screen here with you. Which screen do I want to share? This one here. Uh, and yes, sir. The screen has started. Yes, sir. Visible, sir. Can, can you see it? Yes, sir. You didn't get my joke because it says that you're Rajiv. And when I said Rajiv, you had a sex change and you look much different than the last time I saw you. Nobody yes. laughed at me. Uh, must be a cultural thing. How do I get this to start my friggin slideshow? Because I get all this stuff in the way. Slides, is that it? Here, how do I get this out of my way? Slides are visible, sir. Well, yeah, but I can't I can't start the show because there's all this like stuff in the top of my uh, uh okay, okay. Sir, you just see. do exit full screen, sir. No, that's the wrong one. That's not the right slide. So just stop sharing, sir. Just go to stop sharing. Okay, stop sharing. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And again, open that uh, slide, sir, which you want to show. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Open that slide, sir. And from now, the computer. now yeah. again, start sharing, sir. Okay, just a second. Yes, sir. Now show. again, come to zoom current window, slide. Sir. Okay, now just now exit show. I'll minimize this, share my screen, open that up. Okay, come on. Yes, sir. Yeah, but it's not letting me actually, because at the top of my screen, can I minimize this thing at the top of my screen? Yes, sir. There is, sir, gallery view. Exit full screen, sir. Gallery view? Yes, sir. On Zoom, sir. Yeah, I'm looking. Yes, sir. Where does it say gallery view? Sir, on top of your screen. Uh, participant security, stop video, mute. Sir, just do one thing, sir. You just send yep. your PPTs to Rajiv WhatsApp, sir. And I am sharing here. Well, you know what? I can just do it like this. You can read it like this. It's okay, no big... okay, okay. No oh. issue, sir. Just you can continue, then, sir. Okay, you can you can see this. You can see the slide, right? Everybody can see the slide. Yes, sir. Okay, so here's what I, I what I want to do to start with is I just want to talk about some numbers because one of the things I'm going to argue here is that. Um, that we know absolutely 
nothing about the curve in terms of the pandemic. So uh, to borrow from state Shakespeare, the epidemiological curve is a tale told by an idiot signifying nothing. And I apologize to Shakespeare. Um, if you look at India right now, okay, everybody in the world said, well, look at India, these infection rates are going through the roof. We have no idea what the infection rates are because uh, it's kind of like when Trump said, well, if we test more and more people, we're going to find more and more positives. And, and that's true. And then what Trump said, unfortunately, was well, so we shouldn't test so many people, which is an absolutely ludicrous thing to say. But the problem with th these epidemiological models is that they're based on biased sampling, they're unreliable, and they're also based on assumptions that are dreamed up at night, so therefore they're invalid. When you think about it, you test people who are symptomatic, and they usually test positive. You test frontline workers, and yeah, a lot of them test positive too, and then you test the kind of people who want to get tested. That's not representative of your, of your population. That's a biased sample. So... We know nothing about the true infection rate because nobody's done the right research. And so the only object objective measures that we have right now are deaths per million. And uh, that's, you know, that's as objective as we can get right now. The best thing that we could do is random sample testing. And if you did it every two weeks, that would be fantastic. Okay. We'd know exactly what the infection rate is. We'd know exactly um, the percentage of the population that was walking around asymptomatic and shedding the virus. Uh, but no government in the world has done that because they're relying on epidemiologists who can't think outside of the box. And if you're a real scientist, you think outside of the box and you go, gee, let's borrow methods from some other area of science. Look, they can predict the outcome of a presidential election in the United States. It's a binary response. Generally, there's only two candidates running, okay? And you vote for one or the, or the other. And there's a lot more variance there because, of course, um, people uh, may change their mind between the time that they're polled and the time that they uh, actually vote. Well, COVID-19 doesn't do that, okay? You either have it or you don't have it. So that variability isn't there. So I don't know why governments, and you know, we can yell at the CDC, I can yell at Health Canada, I can yell at the WHO. None of them have figured out what they really should be measuring. So the most objective measures we have right now are deaths per million. So so for many of you are in India, so let's just forget about, you know, the, this silly graph of infection rates that are of, that, of number of infections, because it tells us nothing. Um, if you look at uh, the, the uh, if you look at the West, the part of Western Europe that is more like North America in terms of belief systems, they got nailed by COVID-19. The parts that are less like North America, so places like Denmark, Finland, Norway, um, except for Sweden who just did nothing. They just said, oh, we'll just keep everything open and they, you know, lots of people died. But um, if you look at the United States, as of today, they've got 450 deaths per million. Canada is sitting at 236 deaths per million. And the province that I live in in Canada has uh, 187 deaths per million. There's a big, so if we treated it as though it were a country, it would have 187 deaths per million. And then all of a sudden, things just drop off, okay? Romania, 114. 
Germany, 110, Denmark, 106, Israel, 85, Finland, 59, Norway, 47, Egypt, 45, Ukraine, 37, Pakistan, 26, India, you've only got 23 deaths per million. Compare that to the United States with 450 or to the United Kingdom with well over 600, okay? So uh, the, the, these numbers that they report and, and make up about infection rates are just garbage. They're based on nothing. They're based on bad science. Um, Philippines, 17. Cuba, 8. South Korea, 6. Nigeria, 4. Thailand, less than 1. Taiwan, less than 1. Vietnam, 0 deaths per million. And Malaysia, 0 deaths per million. What's predicting this, actually? As far, the, what I think, I look at this. Countries that were smart enough to just shut down their borders immediately okay, immediately shut down their borders were most successful. And it turns out it doesn't matter whether the country is led by somebody who's politically conservative, whether they're politically liberal, or if it's a military government, okay? Doesn't matter, just as long as they shut down their borders. And there's no reason North this should have happened in North America. And Canada was stupid because we didn't shut down our border with the United States quickly enough. Um, so, yeah, I already talked about that. Um, you know, will we ever live in a post pandemic economy? I'm gonna argue right now for, for, for the sake of argument, Let's just assume that we're not going to, okay? I mean, yeah, I said, well, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a, a a viable vaccine in 18 months, and they said that eight months ago. So they got 10 months to develop a vaccine that's effective that can be distributed to every person, all eight billion people in the world. And if I was a betting man, I'd bet against that. So what I'm going to talk about here today, I'm going to talk a little bit about manufacturing and talk a little bit about tourism. I might get on to women's rights and I might get briefly on to agriculture. Uh, this was referring to another friend of mine because I, I borrowed some of these slides from another talk. Um, in the area of manufacturing, some corporations, some companies have been very successful because what you're going is from raw materials through the entire supply chain to the finished product to delivery to its destination, destination, whether it's internal or external to the country, because we still have an economy that is moving right now. Uh, but what's happened in manufacturing is that the successful companies have done things like ensure that there's physical distancing between their workers and that there's mask use and there's hand sanitization. They've also done things like introduce automation. So automation can be relatively inexpensive, like putting in conveyor belts, to relatively expensive, like installing robots. Um, and, and automation does not automatically mean that people lose their jobs, okay? For example, Walmarts in the United States um, bought robots to replace their janitorial staff. And what they did was they took the janitorial staff and they trained them to work out on the floors. Because I don't know if any of you have ever been into a Walmart, but it's impossible to find somebody to help you. So people didn't lose their jobs. Their job definitions were, were just redefined. Tourism. They've done a great job in places like the Philippines. Um, that tourism is one of the areas that got hit the worst because with manufacturing, you can ensure 
safety of your employees, safety of your production, safety of your product, safety during uh, warehousing, safety during del delivery to another country and warehousing at another country, and then safety in delivering from the warehouse at the other country to the final destination at people's homes. Um, and tourism take, took a big hit because nobody can go anywhere right now. Um, they've started to reopen tourism in Philippines, but what they're doing is they're uh, ensuring that flights coming in and flights leaving are only at 30% of their maximum capacity and having 50, having uh, social dist or uh, physical distancing, let's not call it social distancing because we're all social beings. We're still social when we're physically distancing. Um, and then setting up their resorts so that uh, in that that groups of people that are that are together can be together, but they're distant from other groups. It also means that visiting tourist attractions, there are smaller groups and fewer people let in and distancing rules. It also drives up the cost of tourism, right? Um, but at least they're getting it reopened because we can't live in in a globe with a global economy that's closed forever. It's just not possible. Um, another, an, 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 you know, another issue is that in North America, we've had companies that have decided that they were going to move for, they had a five-year plan to move from storefront retail to absolutely online sales. Okay. And what happened was as soon as the lockdown hit, they were they managed to do their five-year plan in two weeks and these places went completely online and they're never going to go back to storefronts uh now they're not going to become the next jeff bezos but they're going to have they, their business models changed and actually india has been very good about changing business models that that Rather than saying, we're going to wait until we can reopen, India has said, what we're going to do is change our business models so that we're using more automation, we're using more robotics, we're maintaining distancing and this sort of thing so that we can continue manufacturing and delivering products uh, to other countries. Um, this... Uh, Women's rights issue. This is an important one um, because for countries that are burgeoning on becoming first world, like India is, it's never going to happen until two things disappear. And one is the glass ceiling in organizations for women. The other is the issue of rape culture uh, that, that, well, the way she was dressed, she deserved it, okay? That's victim blaming. And, and even a classical feminist like me, I'm not, there are neo-feminists and there are classical feminists. So I'm a classical feminist would say that that's an absolute ludicrous, it's ludicrous. And so, no feminists in the West would support India until attitudes toward women change and until women's rights are, are, are actually elevated and there's equal pay for equal work. Uh, so if you've got a male and a female executive doing the same jobs, they should be receiving the, sa they should be re receiving the same amount of money. I'm actually working with a, with a woman in India right now who's an English professor, and we're dealing with issues uh, revolving around women's rights, arranged marriages, um, and rape culture, and trying to understand attitudes, and then trying to understand uh, how we can develop a program. So we're doing some experimental work, but then we want to develop a program to try and 
affect young women and young men's attitudes toward women so that there is more equality. Um, and until that happens, you're not going to break into the first world because the, femis, the feminists will be all over you, okay? They'll say boycott India. And you don't want people saying boycott India, right? Um, so agriculture, the same thing, you know, in agriculture, the same things in, in, in North America, in Canada, 100 years ago, 32% of our workforce was devoted uh, to agriculture, okay? Now 2% is. Why? Automation, right? What's happened is, is that, uh, that one, one person can do the work of hundreds uh, because they've got, you know, things like combines and they've got irrigation systems and, 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 and technology. Um, and, and so if you said 100 years ago to these people, well, look at, you know, there are 32% of you who are, in, who are involved in agriculture and 100 years from now, there's only going to be 2% 2, 2 of you. What, what are you going to be doing? Do you think anybody would say, well, I'm going to be an internet technologist? or I'm gonna be a fiber optics engineer, or I'm gonna be an optical engineer. I don't think so. Um, so, so essentially, uh, uh, technology changes over time. It doesn't necessarily mean that jobs are lost because no, it's not like all of a sudden we had 30% unemployment, right? Is, is it was a technology involved in the agriculture that changed and that led to those innovations, led to changes in jobs. And it also meant, look at, you had more people building these sorts of things. And, and as we've seen uh, here, you know, we've seen now is we've got more people on the IT side and less people doing other things in grocery stores in, in North America right now. Uh, a lot of cashiers, have, have been their job descriptions have been reassigned. They haven't lost their jobs because we've got these automated checkouts that automatically scan the barcodes and all the products. And so you check, just check things out yourself and stick in your debit card or your credit card and pay for your groceries and leave. Um, so, um, yeah, I've talked about that. So in, in manufacturing, what I was talking about, I'm referring to the entire supply chain. So we're going to go from raw materials to production, to shipping and warehousing on the production end, shipping and warehousing on the delivery end. And this can be anything from vehicles to cell phones, to steel, to agricultural products. We have to maintain safety measures for employees, safety measures for not for, for preventing the uh, spread of COVID within plants, for example, um, and, and throughout the entire supply chain from start to finish. Um, and one of the ways of doing that involves automation too. It involves new technology. Um, we also have to have real safe, safety and corporate responsibility um, and perceived safety. But really, real safety needs to equal perceived safety. So we don't need any, any more Bhopal disasters, right? Where you've got uh, an American company um, like Union Carbide who can't actually produce their products in uh, the United States anymore because Doing, doing it in the manner that they wanted to do it would violate the EPA rules. So instead they moved their plant to Bhopal and it burps up a bunch of gas and uh, kills 16,000 people. Okay, that's, this, this just can't go on anymore. And you can't have Western nations, primarily the United States, taking advantage of countries like India, uh, Bangladesh, Pakistan, uh, uh, Philippines uh, for inexpensive labor. And maybe what we need to do is, is ensure 
that there are environmental protection laws, better vi uh, environmental pr protection laws uh, in some of these country, countries. Fun fact for you is Vandana Shiva actually taught me introductory philosophy in my first year as an undergraduate. Um, We need cor more corporate responsibility in India too. And this is just marketing 101, guaranteeing worker safety through the entire uh, supply chain, changing and changing and manufacturing, ranging from what I said before, like, you know, automation, conveyor, be conveyor belts to robotics, government buy-in to provide real safety certificates on all products, physical distancing and mask use, sanitizing throughout the entire process, uh, making sure that uh, there isn't a glass ceiling for women. Um, in North America, what we're, we're seeing, there's evidence that female academics are paid less than male academics at the same level. And that has to change here. And if that's happening in India, that has to change in India too, has to change around the world. Um, so, as I said, you know, India is on the cusp of becoming a first world nation. Uh, and, you know, we can talk a little bit about the metaphorical war between the elephant and the dragon. Uh, it needs to be won by the elephant. And I'm not really talking about the physical war that's going on in Kashmir right now. Uh, I'm talking about having uh, a, a democracy prevail over a totalitarian regime in terms of coming out on top in the first world. Women's rights issues, as I mentioned before, need to be dealt with. Um, the West isn't gonna proceed with any coalitions if this kind of pro, if there isn't any interest in becoming proactive and forward thinking. Uh, we need, I also believe that we need to, to create a, a World Trade Alliance and Defense Alliance that includes, for example, India, the Philippines, Indonesia, Australia, New Zealand, Thailand, Singapore, Japan, Canada, all of Eastern and Western Europe, because we can't count on the United States for anything anymore. Um, tell me when I'm done and I have to shut up too, because I can wrap it up whenever you want. How much time do I have? How much time? Yes, sir. Hello, sir. How much time do I have? I just want to... 10 minutes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So, India is a, is a country, is a potential, in, in my opinion, to evolve into a first world country, and the United States is unreliable. So, we're all going to... And, you know, look at Canada and India and New Zealand and Australia... Uh, and the list goes on, we were all raped by the British, okay? We're all, you know, I mean, basically, they, they used us as cannon fodder in wars, and they, uh, you know, people, you know, can, the, the Canadians and the Indians were side by side in, in World War I and World War II, and then... Um, People, people don't understand that, you know, Winston Churchill basically stole all of the food from India in World War II to supply the, the war effort that led to the deaths of millions through starvation and mal malnutrition. Um, little, you know, a lot of people just aren't aware of that. Um, so... Um, it isn't surprising that India got its independence in 1947, two years after the war, because I think India said, gee, we just don't want to have this happen to us again. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I already talked about that. I already talked about that. This women's rights issue. It's important. It's important that you need more women executives, you need more female engineers, you need more female IT people, you need to be promoting women and women's education. And there's a lot of educated women in India right now, but they need to be getting into the corporations and contributing 
positively and are recognized, become recognized internationally for what they're doing, because that's going to help market India to the West. And we have to have an alliance. Otherwise, we're going to be stuck with dealing with Z and Putin. And that's just not something that we need to deal with right now. Um, women's rights issues. Uh, my colleague and friend, Prabhasha Mandal, she and I are working on this stuff that I talked about before, uh, you know, and, and we're, we're dealing with attitudes, looking at things ranging from rape, rape culture to arranged marriages, to treating women as chattel, castes, the uh, irrelevancy of the construct virginity, and especially you think about this in terms of the double standard where it's, you know, fine for men, but not for women. Uh, you know, this is just all bizarre stuff that needs to be contended with. Um, and, and we talked about women's rights and chattel, and then arranged marriages are ingrained into the culture but the problem is that appears as though there's no freedom of choice. And if there's no freedom of choice, it doesn't look like women have rights. Um, and then the caste system is very problematic. And even if you use the new government classifications, it still looks pretty problematic. Like your other backward class or caste, it's like, well, that's it's kind of a negative label, you know? Um, Anyway, then we're going to do we're going to do some experimental research to try and and understand how to change attitudes, and then this is going to involve involve goal setting and setting up uh, some uh, programs to try and influence attitudes, um, and it's going to be involved uh, involving a quasi experimental guy, and of course, a random white guy like me can't be the face of this kind of program. So what we need our role models for young girls and young women. So we need female professors and female engineers and female executives to be the face of this program. So we need people in technology and engineering and education. So, I mean, if you look at it this way, there's, I don't know, there's me in some newspaper. I have no idea that might say Bob's an idiot. And then I don't know if you can see her She's a better face for this program than I am, okay? Uh, so, new world economy, women's rights, safety, physical distancing, automation, government buy-in, marketing 101, online sales. Uh, and if people haven't converted to online sales by now, they're gonna be going out of business. Um, Can we keep the world economy closed? No, we can't. So what we've got to do is we've got to take advantage of technology. And here's one issue that really, really bothers me is the way that we're meeting right now, okay? I did consulting for General Motors in 2000 and I was working with General Motors and Saturn Corporation, which was a subsidiary of General Motors at the time. Saturn Corporation was located in Spring Hill, Tennessee, and I was working with the president and executives of Saturn Corporation. The head office for General Motors is in Detroit, so what, they're 2,000 kilometers away from each other. We had a real-time meeting with the president and executives from General Motors and the president and executives from Saturn Corporation, where we were sitting in a room and it was virtually as though we were at exactly the same table in real time, okay? It looked like we were all in the same room. The table that I was sitting at extended it into some kind of projection screen. There was no time delay in communications. What happened to that technology? Where's it gone, okay? I don't get it because it's there, it was there in 2000. We're in 2020 now, 20 years ago, there was, excellent, there was excellent technology for doing the kinds of things that we're doing right now. And this leads into another technological problem that somebody has to contend with because 
any any country, and unfortunately, the province that I live in, Ontario, they want to reopen the schools in September. Any country who goes ahead with reopening schools without having physical distancing and all this stuff in place is is going to have problems. And now, if you have a, you know, I used to teach introductory psychology classes that had 500 people in them. Well, what are you going to do? Are you going to teach it? You could only have 20 people in a regular classroom to have physical distancing or in a classroom of 500, you could cut, you could cut it down to 100. How are you going to pay for those extra classes to be taught? Okay, so it's not going to happen. So we have to get better technology for the delivery of uh, of of schools, schoolwork, universities, and regular schools online. And we've got to figure out how to prevent kids from cheating. That's the biggest issue with the technological side of things. Is that you can have Zoom meetings for for you know uh, for a classroom. How do you stop from cheating? You don't know, and we haven't figured that out yet. Um, anyway, we can't close the world economy, and we've got a lot of technological issues that we do need to deal with. Um, and I've identified some of them, and I'm gonna leave it to you people to figure out the answers. Thank you very much. Anybody have any questions? Questions? I can't hear you. I can't hear anyone. It was actually uh, Divya who raised this this issue about the uh, uh, that I raised again today because of another uh, talk that we were involved in uh, about this this testing this testing problem. And she cited in the paper that I I wrote about this that's coming out in Global Economics Review. So. I will give credit where credit is due. Thank you so much, sir. This was <clears throat> Bob Sinclair, sir. And thank you, sir, for joining us here and giving your time on this platform and enlightening us with your knowledge on this current issues. Thank you so much sir, for joining. Thank you. And hope to thank hear you. from you in uh, coming future also, sir. Please. I hope, Please. I hope it's at a better time of the day. Yes, 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 definitely. <laughs> sir. We will plan accordingly this time, sir. Thank you, sir, for joining. Well, thank you very much. I, it was an honor. Yes, sir. Now, I would like to call Dr. Divya Tanwar, ma'am, for his uh, for her talk. Yes. Hello, everyone. Welcome Hi, back, ma'am. Ma Namaste, ma'am. How are you? Bilkul badhiya, ma'am. Welcome back, ma'am. <laughs> How are you? So my talk is all about cyber crime today. Yes. Cyber crime, cyber security. So basically what I want to say right now, because due to this pandemic, everything is on cyber, everything on the cloud. And we have to be very, very, uh, very, very, uh, like what is the word? Very, very efficient about how we are using our information, how we are using, how we are using that particular information, which is called basically a data. And ma'am, I would need that student will communicate with me. Through uh, even Jobin ki questions, I want to ask questions because this is a way that we should know that we are going उस दौर में जहां पर सब कुछ एक साइबर पे है यानी कि एवरीथिंग तुम्हारा नाम से लेकर तुम्हारा इफ यू आर शेयरिंग योर टेलीफोन नंबर विद समबडी दैट मींस यू आर शेयरिंग योर इंफॉर्मेशन वो आपके आधार कार्ड से है 
वो आपके बैंक अकाउंट से रिलेटेड है वो आपकी छोटी छोटी इंफॉर्मेशन से रिलेटेड है तो इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वट एवर यू आर शेयरिंग तो ये किस तरीके से आप शेयर करेंगे एंड स्टूडेंट आप लोगों के लिए बहुत जरूरी है ये समझना कि व्हाट इज स्टाइबर स्टॉकिंग एंड स्टाइबर बुलिंग क्या होता है एंड किस तरीके से आप आपके हाथ में मोबाइल है वट यू आर सीइंग और किस तरीके से आप किस साइट पे जाके क्या देख रहे हैं और किसको क्या ग्रैस कर रहे हैं और किस चीज से उसको यूज कर रहे हैं बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है आप लोगों के लिए क्योंकि एवरीथिंग ऑन साइबर साइबर में साइबर स्टॉकिंग होती है जिसपे आप लोगों के ऊपर नजर रखी जाती है आप ये नहीं समझिए कि आप अगर किसी भी इंफॉर्मेशन या किसी भी वेबसाइट पर जाते हैं तो आप कभी भी आप किसी भी वेबसाइट पर जाइए उसके बाद आप देखते हैं कि वहां पे अगर दूसरी बार जा रहे हैं तो बहुत इजी है वहां पहुंचना ऑलरेडी उसका एक पाथ बना है दैट इज कॉल्ड कुकीज तो वेन एवर यू आर यूजिंग समथिंग इन्फॉर्मेशन या कभी भी आप किसी भी लॉटरी वेबसाइट पर जाइए आजकल बहुत बच्चे लूडो खेलते हैं लॉटरी वेबसाइट पर जाते हैं तो वेन एवर दे यू आर यूजिंग सम काइंड ऑफ अ पोर्टल वेन मनी इज इन्वॉल्व डोंट शेयर योर इन्फॉर्मेशन दैट इज कॉल्ड डोंट शेयर योर के वाई सी इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड आई थिंक आप लोगों को इसकी इंफॉर्मेशन uh, नहीं होगी कि वॉट इज के वाई सी किसी को पता है के वाई सी क्या होता है आई वॉन्ट टू आस्क एनी स्टूडेंट इज देयर वो कैन टेल मी वॉट इज के वाई सी देखिए बगैर बोलना मुझे कोई नहीं देखेगा यस मैम स्टूडेंट प्लीज रिप्लाई इन चैट बॉक्स ओके आई विल टेल यू वॉट इज ये मुझे पता है इनको नहीं पता होगा के वाई सी इज इज ऑल अबाउट नो योर कस्टमर इफ समबडी इज कॉलिंग यू फ्रॉम पर्टिकुलर एक्स वाई जेड फोन बैंक एंड से आई वॉन्ट टू नो सर आपके क्रेडेंशियल बताइए आपका नाम बताइए आपका आपका बैंक अकाउंट नंबर बताइए आपका एड्रेस बताइए आपका सी वी वी बताइए तो डोंट एवर शेयर अगर आपको पता है तभी उसके साथ शेयर करिए बिकॉज द मोमेंट यू शेयर योर इंफॉर्मेशन आपके अकाउंट से पैसा चला जाएगा आपको समझ में भी नहीं आएगा और समबडी यूजिंग योर अकाउंट इन अ वेरी वेरी डिफरेंट वे जो आपको जैसे जनधन योजना है प्रधानमंत्री जी ने जनधन योजना स्टार्ट करी गांव में स्टार्ट करी उन लोगों के लिए स्टार्ट करे जिनके पास जीरो बैलेंस अकाउंट होता है जिनके पास पैसा नहीं होता यू नो वॉट इज गोइंग ऑन इन जामतारा शायद किसी ने वो पिक्चर भी देखी होगी जामतारा में दैट इज अटीर उद्योग कुटीर उद्योग इज गोइंग ऑन वो उनका एक पूरा का पूरा बिजनेस मॉडल चल रहा है इन विच दे आर दे आर वेल एजुकेटेड ऑन अ सेंस कि आपको एक फोन आएगा आपके फोन पे एक इंफॉर्मेशन आपसे पूरी आप म्यूट हो गए मैम हेलो आई एम ऑडिबल यस मैम एक इंफॉर्मेशन आपसे शेयर करी जाएगी और आपसे पूछा जाएगा कि एक पर्टिकुलर लिंक पे क्लिक करिए एंड यूर ऑल इंफॉर्मेशन विल गॉन तो देर आर टू टाइप ऑफ थ्रेड्स विच आर गोइंग ऑन नाउ अ डेज बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है आप लोगों के लिए समझना वट वन इज कॉल्ड फिशिंग एंड सेकेंड इज कॉल्ड स्पूफिंग वॉट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन दीज टू फिशिंग क्या होता है फिशिंग को यू कैन रिकलेक्ट या आप उससे आइडेंटिफाई कर सकते हैं कि एक जो मछुआरा होता है वो फिश को कैसे पकड़ता है वो उसके लिए चारा डालता है दैट मीन समबडी इज कॉलिंग यू एंड गिविंग यू सम काइंड ऑफ अ प्रोवोकेशन दैट मीन्स वो आपको चारा डाल रहा है वो आपको ये बोल रहा है कि आप किस तरीके से उसके जाल में फंसी तो आप कभी भी वो चीज यूज ना करिए आप उसके चीजों पर ना आइए अगर वो आपसे पूछता है कि ओ क्या होता है ओ आप लोग को पता है क्या होता है ओ जो एक बैंक से जनरेट होता है दैट इज कॉल्ड वन टाइम पासवर्ड वो ऑथेंटिकेशन होता है कि आपसे पूछने के लिए कि दिस इज अ वन टाइम पासवर्ड और ये अभी मेरे ख्याल से दो दिन पहले भी हुआ है कि लोगों ने इंफॉर्मेशन शेयर करी है और उन्होंने कहा है कि हम ये यूज कर रहे हैं बिकॉज लॉकडाउन में कुछ और काम हमारे पास नहीं है तो नेवर शेयर योर इंफॉर्मेशन वन इज फिशिंग एंड सेकेंड इज स्पूफिंग स्पूफिंग क्या होता है कि अगर आपके पास एक पर्टिकुलर लिंक आया एंड यू क्लिक ऑन दैट लिंक एक मेलवेयर या एक वायरस आप आपकी सिस्टम uh, पे चला जाएगा और वो धीरे धीरे आपकी इंफॉर्मेशन देना शुरू कर देगा अगर आपको इसका सबसे बड़ा एग्जाम्पल देखना है तो जाइए एमेजोन का जो चीफ था शेफ या क्या नाम था उसका जैफी था उन्होंने उनकी उनके साथ कितना बड़ा एक धोखा हुआ आप देखना उस तरीके से दैट इज दे आर द पीपल हु आर साइबर एक्सपर्ट पर फिर भी उनके साथ हुआ बिकॉज अ पर्टिकुलर लिंक अ पर्टिकुलर जब आप किसी भी लिंक पे क्लिक करते हैं यू हैव टू बी वेरी माइंडफुल वट एवर यू आर यूजिंग वट एवर यूर इंफॉर्मेशन इज शेयरिंग और अगर किसी तरीके से कुछ हो जाता है अगर सपोज करो आपके साथ कुछ हो गया बुरा साइबर पे तो डोंट एवर कीप टू योर सेल्फ जीरो एफ लिखी जाती है जीरो एफ जिसमें आपकी आइडेंटिटी नहीं डिस्क्लोज होगी एंड एनी वेयर यू कैन राइट दैट जीरो एफ आई आर 
साइबर क्राइम सेल है हर एक जगह हो गए तो यू हैव टू बी वेरी माइंडफुल कि आपके पास साइबर क्राइम के अंदर कौन कौन है उनके uh, उनके लोग होते हैं लड़कियां भी होती हैं मतलब फीमेल भी हैं मेल भी है यू डोंट हैव टू बी मतलब किसी से स्टॉक मत हो ये किसी की इन्फॉर्मेशन से आप दबिए मत जरूरत है कि आप जब भी कुछ बुरा होता है तो आप उसके लिए बोलिए कि हमारे साथ ये हुआ है कभी भी अगर कोई फोटोग्राफ शेयर हो गया या किसी भी तरीके से कुछ चीज ऐसी हो गई है जो साइबर स्पेस पे जा चुकी है वो रिट्रीव हो सकती है विदाउट फर्दर डैमेज उसी को उसी ट्रैफिक के बीच में रोक दिया जाएगा तो वेन एवर समथिंग इज हैपनिंग विद यू तो आपको जरूरत है कि आप उस तरीके से उस एक तो बड़े से बात करिए और साइबर सेल में उसकी कंप्लेन लिखवाइए तो मेरा यही सबमिशन है कि ये बहुत जरूरी है कि आप इसके बारे में पढ़िए इस बारे में और समझिए कि किस तरीके के स्पेस में है बिकॉज नाउ एवरीथिंग इज ऑन अ साइबर योर इन्फॉर्मेशन इज इन अ साइबर और कभी भी वो इन्फॉर्मेशन यूज हो सकती है कभी भी वो डेटा मिस मैनुपलेट हो सकता है आपने कभी देखा कि आप कभी मॉल जाते हैं या कभी भी किसी भी शॉपिंग मॉल में जाते हैं या कहीं पे भी जाते हैं वाई पीपल आर देयर दे विल आस्क यू की गिव योर नेम एड्रेस टेलीफोन नंबर एंड योर कार नंबर वाई वॉट इज द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ दीज फोर वैल्यूज क्या सिग्निफिकेंस है आई थिंक क्या सिग्निफिकेंस है आपकी कार से क्या मतलब है किसी का पूछने का बिकॉज योर कार विल आइडेंटिफाई कि आप कौन से स्लैप में आते हैं आप उस मिडिल में आते हैं हायर मिडिल में आते हैं या बिल्कुल हायर में आते हैं जब आप ये इन्फॉर्मेशन शेयर कर देते हैं तो उसके बाद क्या होता है आपको डिफरेंट तरीके की कॉल आती है कभी देखना डिफरेंट तरीके की कॉल आती हैं कि सर आपके पास इस तरीके का एक डिस्काउंट कूपन है अगर आपने कहा है कि मेरे पास एक गाड़ी है जो एक उस लेवल की जो मिडिल क्लास यूज करता है तो उस तरीके के आएंगे आपके पास डिस्काउंट कूपन के आएंगे अगर आप यूफी और सेंग की आई एम यूजिंग मर्सिडीज और बीएमडब्ल्यू तो आपके पास फॉरेन ट्रिप्स के डिस्काउंट कूपन आएंगे तो यू हैव टू बी वेरी माइंडफुल वट एवर यू आर यूजिंग योर डेटा इज योर की नाउ योर डेटा इज योर एवरीथिंग यू कैन नॉट शेयर योर डेटा बिकॉज साइबर क्राइम हमेशा डेटा माइनिंग पे होता है एंड वॉट इज डेटा माइनिंग डेटा माइनिंग क्या होता है इफ आई एम अ क्रिमिनल मुझे एक डेटा चाहिए किस तरीके का डेटा चाहिए कि मुझे एक ऐसे लोगों को स्टॉक करना है या ऐसे लोगों की इन्फॉर्मेशन चाहिए जो 25 से 20 तीस साल के बीच में हो जिनकी इन्फॉर्मेशन मेरे पास ये हो कि वो जॉब लेस है और जिनकी इन्फॉर्मेशन ये हो कि दे आर सर्चिंग फॉर अ सर्चिंग फॉर सम काइंड ऑफ अ जॉब तो सबसे ज्यादा जो स्टॉकिंग होती है सबसे ज्यादा जो डेटा मैनुपुलेट होता है वो सरकारी जॉब्स के लिए होता है कभी भी देखिए आप सरकारी जॉब पे क्लिक करेंगे तो नीचे के जो स्क्रॉल्स होते हैं चारों पांचों आप किसी पे भी क्लिक करें तो आपके पास अननेसेसरी फोन कॉल्स आने शुरू हो जाते हैं नेवर शेयर योर डेटा क्योंकि कब लास्ट टाइम क्या हुआ था कि एक, एक ने कहा था कि मुझे एक जॉब चाहिए पर्टिकुलर जॉब चाहिए बस उसके साथ क्या हुआ कि उन्होंने उसको अपॉइंटमेंट लेटर दिया मिनिस्ट्री का स्टैंप लगा हुआ और उसे पैसे मांगे और उसके बाद कुछ भी नहीं था कुछ भी नहीं हुआ उसका क्योंकि वो पैसे शेयरिंग होते हैं अगर सपोज करो आपसे कोई अमाउंट मांगता है कि मैं एक पर्टिकुलर जॉब आपका लगवा दूंगा तो ये इस तरीके के जॉब स्कैम सबसे ज्यादा नेचुरल है सबसे ज्यादा नॉर्मल है इन दिस लॉकडाउन नेवर कम टू दैट ट्रैप्स ये आजकल बहुत चल रहा है तो मेरा ही यही था कि आप लोग जब भी इन्फॉर्मेशन शेयर करें बी माइंडफुल वट एवर यू आर यूजिंग इट नेवर शेयर यूर ओ टीपी नेवर शेयर यूर के कभी भी किसी को अगर आप फोटोग्राफ शेयर कर रहे हैं तो यूज वो वाला क्लाउड यूज करिए जिसके अंदर दोनों तरफ से आप डिलीट कर सकते हैं नेवर यूज दैट काइंड ऑफ जिसका सर्वर एक जगह हो जैसे व्हाट्सएप पे मत यूज करिए अगर यूज करना है तो किसी भी और भी प्लेटफॉर्म है ऑलवेज बी माइंडफुल बट एवर यूर यूजिंग इट तो आई थिंक बच्चों उसके बाद बहुत जरूरत है कि आप लोग क्वेश्चन पूछे और मुझे बताए कि कोई इन्फॉर्मेशन है जो मैं आपसे लोगों से शेयर कर सकती हूँ Okay, ma'am. Students, if you have some queries, please write in chat box. हेलो मैम एज यू टोल्ड लाइक जैम तारा सो आई वुड लाइक टू एड समथिंग आई थिंक देर इज अ वेब सीरीज नेम जैम तारा ना द कॉन्सेप्ट इज यस यस Yes. और उसमें क्या है कि पुलिस वाले कोई एक्शन नहीं ले सकते बिकॉज दे आर यूजिंग मोर लाइक 18 से छोटे हैं सारे के सारे जब भी हम उनको ट्रैप करते हैं वो छह महीने के आ जाते हैं और इसे इसे बेस्ड ऑन द रियल स्टोरीज कभी भी आप uh, कोई भी ऑनलाइन शॉपिंग अगर आपको कभी कुछ अगर देखना हो तो आप एक uh, 
जैसे वो जो भी साइट होती हैं जहाँ पे आप बेचते हैं सामान मैं नाम नहीं लेना चाहूंगी आप सामान जहाँ पे बेचते हैं आप उनमें जाइए आप वहां पे एक पोस्ट करिए कि मेरे को ये वाला सामान बेचना है तो इमीडिएटली वो जाम तरह से वो उस तरीके की कॉल्स आती है आपके पास की शेयर दैट काइंड ऑफ अमाउंट आई एम ट्रांसफिंग दैट अमाउंट टू यू तो दे आर यूजिंग जबलपुर इट इज सिचुएटेड नवा हाँ जी Yes. उनका अपना एक कुटीर उद्योग है वो पूरा का पूरा दे आर वर्किंग वेरी और उनके पास बेस्ट ऑफ गाड़ीज है बेस्ट ऑफ एवरीथिंग दे हैव दे आर टोटली इन्वॉल्व इन दीज एक्टिविटीज ओनली यस तो अभी जब भी आपके पास कोई एच डी एफ सी बैंक से या कहीं से भी बैंक से कुछ आता है तो आप उस पर क्लिक ना करिए आपको पता होना चाहिए कि किस तरीके से यूज हो रही है आपकी इन्फॉर्मेशन बिकॉज डेटा डेटा से डेटा माइनिंग और डेटा माइनिंग से देन साइबर क्राइम दीज आर द रिलेटेड रिलेटेड थिंग्स Yes, One question is there, ma'am. Sometimes some sites to ask for email and then the password of that email. Should we enter our password of either email too? No. no. Yes, this question is from Shivani. Never, never, never share your password. Never share your password. Never. Uh, that means if you are using any kind of app, never, never share that photograph thing. You can disagree to any point. If you are using any kind of an app, वो आपसे बोलता है कि आपका फोटो स्पेस ले ले आपके लोकेशन ले ले तो किस चीजों में जरूरत नहीं होती इन चीजों की यू एंड एनी टाइम यू कैन डिक्लाइन की नहीं यूज कर सकते आप तो ना ये करने से कुछ फर्क नहीं पड़ेगा पर आप एक बार अगर आप इसको येस कर देते हैं तो आपकी सारी की सारी इन्फॉर्मेशन उनके क्राउड पे ऑलरेडी चली जाती है योर पर्सनल फोटोग्राफ्स आर देयर योर पर्सनल इन्फॉर्मेशन आर देयर नेवर यूज दिस काइंड ऑफ एप यू कैन डिक्लाइन एनी टाइम कुछ फर्क नहीं पड़ेगा यू कैन स्टिल यूज दैट एप्लीकेशन बट आप अपनी इंफॉर्मेशन मत शेयर करिए उनके साथ यस यस मैम थैंक यू मैम ओके बच्चे टेक केयर ऑफ योरसेल्फ एंड कमिंग थैंक यू वेरी मच मैडम हेलो थैंक यू Thank you so much, ma'am, for joining us here. Now, our next presenter is Mohini Shukla. Mohini, are you there? Please unmute yourself. I will share your yes, slides. Okay, okay. I am sharing your slides now. Yeah. core of much futuristic technologies technological advancement in our world today you can see various example on machine implementation of machine learning around us such as a uh, apple series tesla self driving car shopia ai robot and many more many more are there so what exactly is machine learning machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence it focuses mainly on the designing of system thereby allowing the allowing them to learn and make prediction based on some set of matrix in machine next slide one why is machine learning a subset of artificial intelligence machine learning is the area of computational science that focus on analyzing and interpreting patterns and structure in data to enable learning simply put machine learning allows the user to feed a computer algorithm an immense amount of data and have the computer analyze and make data driving and recommendation and uh, decision based on only the input data if any corrections are identified the algorithm can incorporate 
that information to improve its future decision making. Next slide, please. Next is uh, what? Uh, why is the uh, machine learning important? Data is the life blood of all the business. So data driving increasingly make a difference between keeping up with the competition or filling further behind. Machine learning can be the key of unlocking the value of corporate and customer data and enacting decisions that keep a company ahead of the competition. Next, applications of machine learning. Mohini, please synchronize. This is slide you want to explain? Yes, ma'am. This is the motivating example of learning filter spam. This is the example of uh, machine learning. Uh, this, uh, spam filtering. Spam is all email the user does not want to receiving and has not asked to receive. P is identifying the spam emails and the P is spam that were filtered and percentage of them non-spam emails that were incorrectly filtered out. E is a database or of email that we are labeled by users. Next slide. Then. It is the learning process of machine learning. It is used to measuring device and processing, dimensionality reduction, and model learning and model testing. And uh, this output is the uh, analysis results. It is used the sensor cameras database and uh, future section, future projection, and uh, noise filtering, future extraction, normalization, and uh, replacing clustering and description. The causes of machine learning. Machine learning has application in all types of industries, including manufacturing, retail, healthcare, and life science, travel and hospitality, financial services, and energy, trade stock, and uh, utilities, uses case in manufacturing, manufacturing, productive maintenance, and condition monitoring. Retail is used to upselling and cross-channel marketing, healthcare, and life science is used disease uh, disease identification and risk satisfaction. Travel and hospitality uh, is used to dynamic pricing, finance, service, uh, risk and uh, analy analytics and regulate regulation, energy, energy demand and supply optimization. Classifications of machine learning. There are three types of classification of machine learning. Supervised machine, supervised machine learning, reinforcement machine learning, and unsupervised machine learning. Supervised machine learning. In supervised learning, you train your model on a labeled data set. That means we have both raw input data as well as its results. We Slide uh, our data into a training database and test data set where the training data set is used to train our network. Whereas the test database acts as new data for predicting results or to set the accuracy of our model. Hence, in supervised learning, our model learns for same results the same as our teacher, teachers and teachers and students because the teacher already known the results. Accuracy is what we achieve in supervised learning as model reflection is usually high. The model perform, perform fact because the training time taken 
is less as well as we already have desired result in our data set. This model predicts accurate results on unseen data or new data without even knowing a prior target. In some of the supervised learning models, we revert back the output uh, result to learn more in order to achieve the highest possible accuracy. And next is the uh, reinforcement machine learning. Reinforcement machine learning is uh, it is the reinforcement machine learning is the machine learning algorithm that allows software agent and machine to automatically determine the ideal behavior within a specific content context to maximize its performance. It does not have labeled database to results associated with the data. So the uh, only way to perform a given task is to learn from experience. For every correct action or decision to algorithm, it is rewarded with positive reinforcement where for every incorrect action. It is rewarded with negative reinforcement in this way. It is learned which actions are needed to perform and which are not. And next is the unsupervised machine learning. In unsupervised machine learning, the info information used to train is neither classified nor labeled in the data set. Unsupervised learning studies on how system can infer a function to describe a hidden structure from unlabeled data. The main task of unsupervised learning is to find patterns in the data. Once a model learns to develop pattern, it can easily predict pattern for any new data set in the form of cluster. The system does not uh, figure out the right output, but it is explore the data and can draw inference from database to describe hidden structure form enable data. Next slide. Next. Conclusion. The international inquiry initiated in July 2014, useful for determining current work on machine learning application. Gaps were noticed, though especially in the area of record linkage, linkage most likely due to the nature of the process which deals with the source functions, source functions and search algorithm rather than artificial intelligence. Although the current scrapping is modest, is, uh, it is often a new word for predicting industrial activities. More research on the area is advised for instance of for identifying industrial coding based on text mining on official websites. Thank you, Mohini. So now, you. now I would request to our session chair, Dr. Karan Singh, sir, to ask some questions. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, uh, what was the contribution in this paper? Hello. Sir, your voice is a bit low, sir. Now, it is clear? Now clear, sir. Yeah, what was the contribution in this paper? Mohini, please answer. Yes, ma'am. Please answer. Sir is asking something. Yeah. Yes, sir. What is the contribution in this paper? What was the work proposed by you? It is a review yes. paper, survey paper, or contributed paper? Yes, sir. Ah, it is a review paper, or a contributed paper, or survey paper? Ohini, sir, janna chahte hai ki aapne jo presentation di hai, isme aapka contribution kya hai? Ye koi review paper tha, ya survey paper tha, ya research aapne kya kiya hai? Thoda sa is baare mein batayiye. It is a research paper. 
अपने ऑब्जेक्टिव्स के बारे में थोड़ा सा बताइए सर को वट वॉज द ऑब्जेक्टिव आप वही जानना चाह रहा हूँ ना रिसर्च पेपर में आपका कंट्रीब्यूशन क्या था वो जानना चाह रहा हूँ इफ इट इफ इट इज ए रिसर्च पेपर तो आपने क्या प्रपोज किया है सर ये मशीन लर्निंग पे था और सर ये मैंने रिसर्च करके बनाया था गूगल से अरे नहीं गूगल से तो ठीक है लेकिन कोई काम होगा ना तुम्हारा तुमने क्या बनाया गूगल से तो मिल गई इन्फॉर्मेशन बट आपने क्या किया मैं ये जानना चाह रहा हूँ बस एक लाइन में मैंने सर्च करके बनाया प्रेजेंटेशन था हमारे कॉलेज okay. चलो ठीक है नाउ आई वु लाइक टू कॉल नवीन पटेल Is it visible now? My screen is visible to you. No, no, not yet. No. No, not yet. Hello. No, Navin, not visible. Yes, yes, now visible. Navin, I will request you. Can you please put off your video so that some bandwidth may be saved? And uh, since you are showing okay. on bit low network, okay. आप video off कर लीजिए तो थोड़ा सा net change हो जाएगा. Yes, क्योंकि ये लिख रहा है started screen sharing but अभी आया नहीं है. Is it visible now? My screen? Ah uh, no. From here it is showing that I am sharing my screen. Wait a second. Yes, now we now visible. Mr. Navi, now it is visible. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. Please proceed. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Yeah, welcome. So I am Navin Patel. I'm currently working as assistant professor in uh, Department of Civil Engineering, IIT Ayodhya. so my research area is uh, basically related to environmental engineering and my topic of the presentation is uh, optimization of process parameter for four chlorophenol degradation in packed bed reactor using immobilized bacillus subtilis so it might be uh, like uh, the topic uh, it is uh, related to environment so but i need uh, your uh, assistance over the optimization by using uh, several softwares like cfd and uh, and so on so here is the outline of my talk it uh, it basically includes introduction literature review of the work objective of the work material and methods result and discussion conclusion and references uh, so introduction what is four chlorophenol uh, it is basically uh, when when uh, when chlorine is added to uh, phenols at the fourth position it is uh, chlorophenol uh, sorry when uh, phenols uh, contains uh, chlorine at respective position it is, these are the chlorophenolic compounds and when it is at the fourth position then it is the four chlorophenol and these are uh, these are considered as xenobiotic uh, contaminants that occurs basically during the uh, because of the various anthropogenic activities like coal pesticide oil refineries petrochemical plants 
and uh, why, why what is the issue with the, uh, with four chlorophenol or chlorophenolic compounds that they have been considered as as one of the more one of the most highly toxic carcinogenic and persistence uh, com, uh, com contaminants present in, in the environment by uh, us epa united states environmental protection agency and <clears throat> so uh, the, uh, even the small amount of them are very toxic to human and aquatic life so here what we can do uh, to remove these chlorophenols and other uh, and these uh, contaminants so we can uh, either adopt physical physico chemical method or biological uh, processes that includes the physico chemical method include activated carbon ozonation or chlorination or other solvent extraction methods and whereas in the process of biological we use the biological method that are naturally present in the environment for it, for the degradation of the chlorophenols in uh, what are the advantages of the using biological process or uh, and immobilized cells uh, actually uh, by using biological process what it means that we have taken uh, we have taken whatever uh, we are using for the removal of the toxic elements from the environment only so what it creates it do not uh, uh causes further pol uh, pollution or uh, does not uh, release any secondary contaminants to the environment mm -hmm. so in this uh, in this uh, uh, research i have taken bacillus subtilis it is an a uh, microorganism that uh, has been tested for uh, for chlorophenol degradation and uh, in order to prevent them from the toxic environment as the for chlorophenol is highly toxic so we have done immobilization of that bacillus subtilis into the cell and then uh, it's a reusability study it is reusable that one main advantage that it is reusable and cost a uh, cost process uh, elimin uh, and eliminates the cost process means that it can be used for several times so it uh, it can it is little bit uh, less uh, less costly uh, and easy in operation so here is the literature review uh, uh, there are several references like basic et al have used candida tropicalis phb5 and for the degradation of four chlorophenol and they they have done uh, degradation up to 949.7 uh, mg per liter of the four chlorophenol uh, and the time duration for their study was like somewhere to 60 hours and so on the objective is to uh, optimize the process parameter uh, by which we can have the highest four cp degradation using immobilized beads uh, of the uh, bacillus subtilis and the uh, system was used as pa uh, packed bed reactor and the process kinetic second objective is the, uh, to study the process kinetic study of the four chlorophenol degradation in this we uh, we have uh, and third one is the reusability and performance analysis of the of, of immobilized calcium beads alginate beads so what are the material method we have uh, adopted first the strain we have used is bacillus subtilis with the with its assertion number is mf447841 and we have done uh, subculturing of it for that we have uh, taken biomass growth study uh, and then after we have done analysis of the four chlorophenol and preparation of immobilized calcium alginate beads and experimentation in in back bed reactor and data analysis so uh, how we have done back, uh, bacterial subculturing we have followed the following process firstly we have prepared the liquid and solid media that will uh, that will be discussed in the further slide and then uh, we have done the autoclaving for uh, for this disinfection point of view in order to prevent it from the other uh, contaminant that i have been uh, present because of its exposure in the air and then we have done the plating for of the solid uh, in the solid media and incubation of the bacterial strain for 24 hours so how we have uh, uh, preparation of the media for bacterial culture uh, the composition of liquid media is uh, contains 100 meter of distilled water into a conical flask and 1.3 gram of nutrient broth in it and the uh, solid media is prepared by adding extra 2 g of agar so this this are the figure that i am showing to you this is the uh, the one uh, in the petri dish it is like a solid media and uh, one in the flask is uh, showing somewhat to liquid media so how we have done the biomass growth study we have uh, once when once the bacillus subtilis was added into the liquid media at 4 hour of interval uh, we have taken a sample we have centrifuged it at 4 degrees celsius for 10 minute and then the supernatant that uh, uh, that was uh, accumulated after uh, that uh, after the, the centrifugation is uh, discarded and uh, it was uh, it, it was further uh, used in spectrophotometer 
at a 600 uh, nanometer for its study and the biomass group curve was ob uh, obtained like this so here is the uh, four chlorophenol degradation profile of the standard curve so here in this we have made a standard four, uh, four chlorophenol solution and we have done the study at 298 uh, uh, 298 nanometer of the optical density using spectro photometer so how we have done the immobilization of the bacterial cells in the alginate bead so Firstly, we have done uh, the centrifugation of the cell suspension uh, that we have uh, initially prepared by using the liquid media. And then we have made a, uh, a desired percentage weight by volume of the solid alginate solutions. And then after that, hello. Hello, Manisha, I'm audible to you. Uh, yes, yes, Naveen, very much audible. Okay, okay. Yes, okay. So uh, we have done the centrifugation of the cell and after that, the supernatant was discarded and uh, it was mixed with a desired percentage weight by volume of sodium alginate and it was mixed. And then it was uh, added drop-wise drop. -wise drop. Uh, here in this study, we, uh, we have used uh, a 1 ml micro pipette and a 5 ml syringe for making the bead. So uh, the percentage of the uh, calcium chloride was varied. And it was kept for one hour for the formation of the bead. And the bead size were measured. Uh, it was like uh, 2 mm and 4 mm. So here's the figure that will clearly show how the beads were formed after one hour. And these beads were kept uh, in refrigerator at 4 degrees Celsius for further use. So how, what are the factors that is going to be, uh, uh, that is going to affect the biodegradation of 4 chlorophenol by using immobilized cell? So here it is temperature, pH, L alginate bead size, the bead, that, uh, the, the bead that we have prepared previously, the alginate bead size, its, its strength, bed height uh, that we are going to be uh, discuss in the further slides, and the flow rate and initial 4CP concentration. So it, it, it was a laboratory setup uh, that we have used. Here a sample containing 4CP, we have used to pump it out to the, uh, that is the back bed reactor. It is the total height of the back bed reactor is 25 centimeter, but in the exper experimentation, we have used 40 centimeter of the height. And uh, at the end of the outlet, it was used to collect the sample after the, after the treatment. And one is under the close and at the bottom of the back bed reactor. So here it is the real setup. That was the line diagram uh, kind of thing. It was the real setup that is the pyrostatic pump. It is used to maintain, uh, regulate the flow through which we are going to regulate the flow of the 4CP feeding. So, what uh, analysis? How we are, how we have done the analysis of the 4 chlorophenol? Analysis of the 4 chlorophenol that the curve uh, we have done basically using using a UV spectrophotometer, and the whole test was done up to 105 minutes, and the uh, and the uh, sample was collected at uh, from the outlet of the uh, of the pad bed reactor after uh, five minutes and uh, the value and the it uh, and the collected sample was then then centrifuged and were tested uh, using uh, spectrophotometer at 298 nanometer and then the OD, OD values were noted and a curve was uh, plotted and here is the experimental runs and results consideration for the experiment overall height of the PBR was considered uh, was, taken, was 25 centimeter, but height is fixed for experimentation. I fix it to 14 centimeter and flow rate, flow rate I have I, uh, I have fixed at 1.2 ml per minute using peristaltic, but uh, using peristaltic pump. So optimization of process parameter for efficient for CP degradation, what results we have obtained. Uh, first, uh, first uh, in the optimization process, we have uh, uh, use, uh, done the optimization of percentage weight by volume of sodium alginate and calcium chloride. Uh, uh, while performing uh, this study, we have uh, fixed two parameters. Initially, the 4CP inlet 4CP concentration was taken to 1000 milligram for all the tests and size of the bead that was prepared uh, initially using 1 ml micro pipette and 5 uh, ml syringe. Uh, we have considered the uh, bigger uh, bead size that was prepared using 1 ml micro pipette and that was up to that was exactly 4 mm of the size so uh, five different concentration of the sodium alginate uh, and calcium chloride were prepared that is three percent weight by volume in 100 ml uh, in 100 ml plus three by three percent uh, of the sodium alginate plus three percent of the calcium chloride and uh, uh, 
these bills were prepared and when the study was performed it was found that 3.5 plus 3.5 of sodium alginate so the figure you can uh, see that sodium alginate percentage 3.5 plus 3 uh, calcium chloride concentration 3.5 uh, have shown uh, have shown maximum degradation that is up to 23% uh, within the test span of 105 105 minutes okay so uh, from the next slide optimization of bead size uh, was done in this case uh, what we have done we have done the uh, which bead size is going to be effective whether it is 4 mm or 2 mm so in this uh, what about the condition that we have optimized in the previous condition that is 1000 mg per liter of the 4 cp concentration and the test run of 105 minute plus uh, the uh, uh, plus plus the concentration uh, plus the flow rate of 1.2 ml were maintained and uh, uh, in this uh, two size bead that were uh, that is of 2 mm and 4 mm were studied and uh, through uh, through this the removal efficiency uh, we have found that the bead of 2 mm were having the more efficiency of degradation of the 4 cp as compared to the 4 mm size bead then the test result this is the uh, line diagram of the curve that i have obtained after 105 minute outlet 4 cp concentration then after that we have done the optimization of initial concentration what concentration that we have fixed initially that is of 1000 mg per liter right now we are going to vary and uh, by fixing the uh, process parameters like uh, like uh, uh, like flow rate 1.2 ml per uh, minute and uh, that uh, the bead size of 2 mm and uh, uh, we are going to vary the initial 4 cp concentration right now we have taken uh, we have uh, passed the 4 cp of 1000 mg per liter plus 75 500 and 250 we have obtained that at the optimized condition of the bead that is of uh, size 2 of uh, 2 mm we have found that the degradation of uh, degradation of 4 cp was highest uh, for uh, for 500 uh, initial 4 CP concentration that is of 45.39 percentage. So this is the curve that we have obtained for different outlet 4 CP concentration at uh, with respect to 105 minutes of the time and highest uh, 4 CP removal concentration was founded to be 45.39 percentage. So uh, after that we have done the process kinetic study of the 4 CP uh, degradation uh, and for that we have uh, used some mathematical modeling here. Uh, here here there is requirement of the computer scientist to do uh, some work for me like CFD. CFD or can be done uh, with much better. I'm not uh, very much perfect in uh, in the computer softwares. So uh, for the uh, this we have used the process parameter. Wait a second. It is not moving. Forward. Okay. So these are the mathematical computation, uh, the formulas that uh, that we have used in the study of the uh, mathematical modeling. Wait a second. Uh, so important parameter which is needed to be uh, seen from this mathematical computation that is the value of neta and phi what exactly the value of neta and phi shows ki bhai bead to tha us bead mein kitna zyada 4 cp andar ghus raha hai ya nahi ghus raha hai wo andar ja raha hai ki nahi ja raha hai ye hame janna bahut zaruri hai ki kahin uske surface ke upar hi kahin wo ikattha to nahi ho raha hai absorb to nahi ho raha hai for that uh, it is it is one of the important studies that we have uh, we have done so uh, if the if, by seeing the equation you can easily find that uh, these are inversely proportional if the value of uh, phi is small then the value of neta will be more nearer to uh, one and this shows that there is no internal mass transfer hindrance we, this means that the, the force cp was easily dissolved in that bead so uh, here is the result that we have obtained you can see that for 2 mm size of the bead the value of neta was uh, somewhat to 0 0.634 and the uh, value of phi was like 1.05 uh, and for 4 mm bead it was much lower as compared to 2 mm bead the effectiveness coefficient neta so it has been founded that the degradation uh, carried out by 2 mm bead was because there was no internal mass transfer hindrance and uh, uh, further, we have done the reusability and performance analysis of the immobilized bead. 
uh, we have used the previously optimized fees that, that was used uh, that was like uh, 500 uh, ml of the flow rate and 2 mm B side uh, and we have done uh, done for uh, for four number of cycle and we have found out that the removal efficiency of 4 CP was highest when it was in the first one it degraded simultaneously simultaneously for uh, cycle number two three and four you can see from the presentation that is uh, it, it degraded to 31.3 so a uh, result uh, these are the results that uh, of the previous experimentation of the four consecutive cycles so what uh, my conclusion is that by using a uh, uh, bachelor subclass uh, uh, degradation of 4 cp was possible and it was like 10 within 1.045 minute 1. Point, uh, 105 minutes it was uh, nearly 45.39 percentage and uh, the effectiveness coefficient of uh, 2 mm bead uh, were more as compared to 4 mm beads and it, it, it can be reused so it can be used in for future for the uh, for the degradation of 4 uh, chlorophenol here are the some references and thank you thank you so much mr naveen patel for presenting your work here. Uh, now I would request to our session chair, Dr. Karan Singh, sir. Hello, Hi, Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, your paper was good. So uh, where do you implement this paper? Actually, uh, basically, uh, this is for the degradation. I'm totally an environmental scientist, sir. So uh, uh, these are the uh, four chlorophenol is exactly uh, industrial waste, which is found in the pesticide from, uh, industry near to pharmaceutical industry. So for degradation of that, after the pro proper optimization, we can use that uh, use it uh, in fact use it by using packet reactor for the degradation of the four chlorophenol. Uh, what is the meaning of the optimization in proposed scheme? Uh, how are you saying it is an optimized method? Actually, uh, we have done, we have uh, uh, in laboratory, we have optimized it. Sir, uh, we have uh, done uh, means 100 of tests, and for each parameter, we, uh, we have studied. So, uh, we have optimized it laboratorily only, sir. So, any, we, any, any optimized algorithm have you used, or you are doing? Uh, no, sir, only laboratory optimized. Uh, sir, actually, in another of the uh, R1, uh, this is the, sir, uh, it, it's a column bed reactor. In batch reactor, we have used model, like lever spoon model and other models. So, in that, we have done, we have taken seven models, sir. So, when you say it is a optimized method, what is yes, the sir. parameter on the which base you can say it is a optimized? Okay, now it, it is exactly optimized. Uh, sir, actually, uh, we have fixed several parameters while, uh, while, uh, while designing the bead size. Uh, sir, firstly, we have done optimization of the only flow, uh, sorry, bead size, sir. Uh, in that, sir, what, what we have done, we have made several sizes bead. And we have found out that the bead that were smaller uh, were giving the maximum degradation. So, we have concluded and we have found it in literature also, okay. through some literature also. We have referred to literature like Pasek et al. have done some work with Candida bacillus. Uh, Candida topicus PH, uh, B5, uh, PHB5. Uh, what was the latest year of the literature? The latest year of the literature only, uh, sir, 2020, sir, it, it is the old presentation. So it, it, it is somewhat to 220. We have used one of the paper that is based on the CFD analysis, sir. Uh, I actually want to insert a CFP analysis uh, into my research area, but I'm a little bit, little bit slow in learning software, so it is taking some time. Okay, okay. thank you. Nice presentation and theory answer. Thank you so much, sir, and thank you, Mr. Naveen. Now, here I would like request to convener of the conference, Dr. Brijesh Bharadwaj, sir, to conclude the session and offer vote of thanks to our panelists. Over to you, Brijesh, sir. Uh, thank you, madam. I am grateful to uh, many experts and guests who have come to share their knowledge in this national conference on communication and computing for Industry 4.0. Thank you, 
so much all experts and our guest i especially uh, thanks to uh, professor karan singh uh, css yes css jnu new delhi sir is the member of the several committee in government their simplicity and high thinking to work inspire all of us uh, thank you very much sir give me a valuable uh, time for us i thank to the professor divya rasmi tanwar madam director sanskrit university delhi uh, she has authored several books of management information system database management system data mining and security she is on the editorial board of index center research general she is aggressive researcher and has published paper on information technology networking concept and design she has also served as a director examination for yes rde net thank you so much madam i thank to all faculty members research scholar and student who have joined us we are all aware that at this time the whole world is fighting covid-19 global disease so online conference such as this provide a valuable opportunity for a faculty student and research scholar i am sure you will have fruitful and rewarding exchanges in two days i uh, thank all faculty members and member of organizing committee whose tireless efforts made the webinar a success i express my thank mainly to engineer raju kumar engineer manisha yadav engineer ramesh misra engineer parthosh tripathi vivek amlani akhilesh kumar kavita srivastava who had played an important role in organizing this webinar thanks a lot once again to all of you jai hind jai bharat thank you so much sir now here we are ending our first day of this national conference so thank you all participants dignitaries and guests thank you dr karan singh sir for joining us here tomorrow we all will join again at sharp 11 am for our second and third technical session followed by validatory program so thank you all for joining i have already shared attendance a link and feedback form link in your zoom chat box so you all are requested to please submit your attendance and feedback also thank you so much for joining